All right, so I'm here today with uh, Tia Brown from Seven Hills Neighborhood Houses. We're uh, partnering with Seven Hills Neighborhood Houses for our first quote unquote grant from our Community Blend Give Back project. There's another video on that if you're interested in what we're doing with that. We won't have to get into that here, but um, Tia is sort of our first relationship where we're trying to give back to uh, the community that we're surrounded by and uh, I guess residing in with our, I mean, you can almost see our building like right there. So I've got a few questions submitted, some by you guys, some by our own staff, and I was just gonna read them off my phone here for Tia. Um, I mean, easy one is if you'll explain to us just generally what is Seven Hills Neighborhood Houses. So the neighborhood houses started decades ago kind of like a, a settlement model house. Okay. So back in the 40s, a lot of people don't even know that Camp Joy started right here. Oh, really? Yes. I thought I saw that sign. Yeah, there's okay. a nice little placard we have outside. So yeah, Camp Joy started here. We've been in the West End for decades. And before this building was here in the 70s, there used to be a church that stood on this ground. Okay. So um, in the 60s, Seven Hills Neighborhood Houses got incorporated. And since then, we've been serving the community through social services from all kinds of things, from our bread room, food pantry, emergency toiletry assistance, uh, a, su a support to all the community uh, sports teams. We, ho we hold lots of community meetings. People get married here. Th there's repasses really? here, all kinds of things. Community garden. That community, yeah. yeah, our raised bed garden here. Wonderful space for um, the, the residents and also our seniors who live in the Sands building right behind us. So it's, it's a lot harder for them to get down and garden as usual. So that, and then we also have victims of crime services where we have advocates who reach out to people who are recent victims of crime and we offer support and resources to them as well as our trauma recovery center which we also have um, licensed counselors on staff and social workers to help support people who are experiencing trauma both in the west end and outside and then on top of all of that we were very very involved in the community when we did our west end speak community plan back in 2016 okay. so right now we are the lead agency the lead place matters agency that helps to push forward the west end speak community plan because the community put it together this was their goals and we are working to help them achieve the goals that they put in place and we're also the cdc of the west end which oh, is really? the community development corporation okay, yeah. so we're very involved in the development going on in our community trying to make sure that um we we are mitigating dis displacement and trying to mitigate um, gentrification sure. so people who have called this place home for decades can continue to live here. Sure, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Well, it's a mouthful, but it's we do a lot. That's of, a lot of work. No, yeah, that's it's, great. Yeah, that's awesome. it's a lot. It's a lot of things, but we're we're we definitely are part of the fabric of the community. Sure. We you know have long relationships because we've been in the community for so long, and it's just it's a wonderful place to to live and work. Awesome. So uh, where we're directly or indirectly involved most with you guys mm -hmm. is with the eviction assistance program. Yes. Um, so I was just wondering if you could give us how long has that been around? Is it a new thing? Mm -hmm. And have you seen a real bump in requests or people needing assistance from that program since this whole pandemic thing came out? Just kind of like a little history and where you're at yeah. now with it. So the fund first started in last year in 2019. Okay. We got some funding from Tri-State Wholesale, which was a West End company. Yeah. They were bought out by FC Cincinnati, okay. and they were planning to move to Lower Price Hill, and they didn't want to pay for their new building. But um, Council Member Denard at the time was instrumental in the relationship, and we were able to get the value of that building they were going to acquire um, in Lower Price Hill, the amount of that, which was $176,000, was donated to the neighborhood house under the umbrella of eviction support and housing support. Sure. It started in um, March of 2019 sure. and that's when the application started. They had to be West End residents, you had to be of a certain income level, and um, you had to be facing eviction. Okay. So. And what order of magnitude? You, like one a day, one a week, 10 a day? Pre-pandemic, I guess. Pre-pandemic, <laughs> pre-pandemic, I, I can tell you that from March of 2019 to December of 2019, there were, we took 88 applications in. Wow. And wow. Okay. In those applications, there were over 40 children that were in those homes, and we were able to help save those families from being evicted. We, we already knew w when the fund first started that eviction was a huge thing affecting our neighborhood as well as the citywide. Sure. So um, once the pandemic hit, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have the, the parameters too strict for people to be able to access yeah. support. So. Um, we initially thought we required for them to show us an eviction notice from their landlord, sure. but 
once the pandemic hit and we knew people would, would be um, missing work and having less money to work with because stimulus checks hadn't gone out and things of that nature, sure. we basically took that requirement off of them having to have an eviction notice to they're just behind on their rent and there's some form of a letter from their landlord. So we were able to just make it a little bit more flexible to help serve the community better. Mm -hmm. And again, this eviction resource is strictly for West End residents. Okay. A lot of our resources here at the neighborhood house are for anybody in the city who wants to come in and, okay. and get, get support. But the eviction is strictly for West End residents. And cool. we had to put that parameter on, again, because of the amount we received and how we want to stretch the funds as much as we can. You know, it's difficult at times, but we are grateful that we do have this resource there and that we do have partners and neighborhood partners like you guys sure. who are willing to see the need and be able to participate in some way to help us continue to provide that support. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, you mentioned from March of 2019 to basically the end of the year, December, yeah. you helped 88 residents. Yeah. Um, how many, I guess in total now since the fund has started, do you have like a rough number off the top of your head? How many residents have been helped in the West End from the eviction assistance program up to now? Yeah, um, I'd say about 145 families. Wow, okay. And that's just from March of um, 2019 until right now, until which right is now. September 2020. What's the average amount of affordable housing contribution, from, I guess from you guys to a family? Is it just like, oh. is it really just based on their rent or is it a, a discrete amount of money that goes to them no matter what their rent is? No, it's based off of, it's usually one month's rent, late fees, court costs. Okay. So if it's gotten to that point where there's a late fee and there's a court cost, that's typically the amount if there are, extra, are extraneous situations, we're willing to try to work with the landlord and see what else we can do to make sure that they can stay in, in their home. Awesome, that's great. Next to last question is, what are some things you would like the rest of the city to know about the housing needs of West End residents? That's a big one, mm -hmm. housing needs. You got one sentence, no. No, don't even do that to me, I can't, I can't do it. No, I guess uh, more specifically, yeah. what would you like, um, people who live in other parts of the mm -hmm. city who maybe want to get involved, yeah. what would you like them to know about housing needs of Western residents who would be candidates for an ev eviction assistance program or that sort of thing? Not, not necessarily okay. the residents that have the choice to come Thank and you. go. Yeah, so I would say that individuals are trying to um, make a dollar out of 15 cents. You ever yeah, hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever hear that saying? You know, um, there are so many hardships that people are facing. You know, people are facing different challenges and um, whenever we have something in the community that's there to be able to support them, to be able to stay in their home, it's a big thing. You know sure. what I mean? There's a lot of stress and trauma that comes when a family is facing eviction, especially, you know, it's one thing if you're a senior, you, you're on a fixed income, right. you're trying to get your, your medication and things like that, and you're trying to buy your food, and you're going to the local pantries to right. make up for the, the gap that's there, and, you know, things happen you know and people don't necessarily have a an emergency fund that they can yeah. dip into because they're living off of seven hundred and fifty dollars a month yeah. or you know or maybe you know nine hundred dollars a month and it's just hard and then there's you know there's there's the young families with children and there's expenses that come up so whenever there can be something in the community that is there to serve serve the residents to help to keep them protected and in their homes I mean, it's just a blessing to be able to have that resource here and to have the opportunity to continue to um, have it available for our, for our community members. We don't want them to feel, to feel displaced. We don't want them to feel pushed out as the neighborhood develops and changes. And um, we're hoping that having um, units here that are of, a, of an affordable level, not necessarily um, low income units everywhere, but affordable working class um, rent, rental opportunities and home ownership opportunities, we're hoping that, th that the neighborhood can develop in an equitable way and having an eviction rental um, program in, in the neighborhood, it, it's a great thing to have. Mm -hmm. Especially as a buffer for people who maybe want to stay in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, but just due to, especially right now, unknown circumstances, mm -hmm. just can't, right? Yeah. So. No, that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I promise this can be your last question. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I love this one. What are uh, other ways that people who live in other parts of the city can engage and support the work of the Neighborhood House? Strictly if this? Strictly you. Strictly the Neighborhood House. Oh, as a whole? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. All we're right, just, we're now. Just, well... Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, you, we could be here for hours, I'm sure, of all the things that you could have people volunteer <laughs> yeah. for. Low-hanging fruit where people who, especially given 
uh, recent events, a lot of questions arise around like, well, what work are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like if you're not having any issues with racism in your life, then prove it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like a lot of people who never really thought twice about it before, maybe mm -hmm. now considering like, well, what am I doing and what can yeah. I get involved yeah. in? Um, to not not just to prove to my friends, but to actually be an asset to the yeah, community. Yeah. So I was just wondering if you had some low hanging fruit. Like, yeah, these are like the five things that people can just call me right now to get yeah. involved. Yeah. So um, I don't want to say it first, like it's the most important, but monetary is huge. Sure. Monetary donations are huge because it just allows us to be able to stay in existence and keep doing what we're doing. So I don't want to downplay that, and I don't want to elevate that to. The, to the point where it's like the most important. But it is, you know, yeah, we, we gotta have the lights on, we gotta be open, and we have to have resources to be able to provide to people to be able to serve the needs. So that is always a, a huge thing that we, we're always um, willing to make new partners and have new friends come in to be able to support the work of the neighborhood house. Sure. We've taken donations before in terms of um, pantry items and gently used or brand new um, clothing items or you know electronic devices because you know we have children at home trying to log on to school they might not have the device that they need to be able to properly log on so we always need tutors and mentors down here for community members we always have community cleanups that people can come down and like l lend some of their their muscles to to yeah. help us you know um, keep up our parks to make sure it's beautiful for the community so we're walking around and not you know um, and, and enjoying what we're looking at and feeling charged up by the community that we're in it's always nice when we have volunteers and then also professional volunteers you know mm -hmm. people who come in who have a background in marketing who have a background in advertising sure. or social media or something like that to be able to help step up and help um, help with those kinds of things so we are pumping our name out there and and putting the be our best foot forward and showing ourselves and our brand in a in a wonderful way and being engaged, engaging not in, even in the community but also online. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for um, partners who have a heart for workforce housing, who want to come in and develop in an equitable manner sure. to include the community community and things. We need a lot of businesses in the West End mm -hmm. to come down here and to serve the need and um, to fill these gaps that we have so our community can continue to grow and thrive but then make sure there are businesses that are, you know, not ignoring the people that are here, you know what I yeah, mean? Like businesses sure. that are relevant, that um, serve, serve needs. That's right, thank you. Well, we're excited to be working directly with Tia in the neighborhood house here on the West End. Essentially, uh, 50 cents for every pound of community blend uh, for this quarter is going right to this woman and, and her work here. So um, the more you're supporting community blend, the more you're supporting the community that we are involved in directly here on the West End. So. Thank you for being the boots on the ground, and thank you for being willing to uh, invest in your uh, addiction <laughs> <laughs> to uh, help us funnel money, because we're just essentially just the middleman here trying to engage ourselves and people who are into what we're doing with um, communities that we're involved in, specifically here on the West End to start. Um, so, And I don't want to prolong the interview, but it means a lot when organizations like yours were, are willing to do this. Having organizations like you all who are in the community, who are, who are willing to get in the trenches and recognize the need and seeing, hey, there's something that we could do. Let's do something. Like, we can't just sit back and do nothing. It, it really, it helps, it makes a difference. It helps the relationship to continue to grow that we had already established. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's all good. So who doesn't want that? For sure. Well, this is where eight months ago I would have given you a high five, but yeah. Instead, I just have to walk away. <laughs> How about a bow? <laughs> yeah, <we> what's up? <laughs>